Now I got a 35 kilowatt solar system. Wow, that that is big. And I bought it so I don't have any more bills. But I still got electricity bills. And I've always wondered what am I missing in my life? And I couldn't work it out. And you know what I've been missing? A battery. Presented by your energy answers. Thanks to the $2.3 billion federal battery rebate, I've been able to get a battery. And just to make sure I don't miss out, I made sure my battery is going to be turned on just after midnight on the 1st of July. I was the first that actually is able to claim that federal battery rebate. Now you would think with all these big battery promises and installers busy like there is no tomorrow, this would be a renewable energy stream. But you know what happens to some dreams? They can turn into a nightmare. Just think of pink bats. The so-called pink bats program was set up in 2009 by the Rudd government as part of a stimulus package. But four young men lost their lives while rolling out that program. And there are also claims of homes being damaged and businesses losing money. There was Peter Garrett promising the world people were feeling cosy in their homes. And overall, it was a damn good idea. Except the road to hell is paved with a lot of good intentions. And we just might be in that same situation again. So I decided to attend the night of nights, the Oscars of the renewable energy industry. So we all watched with bated breath as the Minister for Climate Change and Energy, Chris Bowen, was bestowing the wisdom of his experience onto the solar installer community. But then I thought, Look, I can listen to the politicians, I can listen to the people with opinions, but maybe the best is you start asking the people in the industry what are the good bits about that battery rebate and also how we can possibly not turn this into a nightmare. 17 years in the solar industry, we've had uh, a lot of stimulus and we've had a really good run. With every boom, which is what this is, comes a bust. We have gone from caring a lot, as an industry, caring a lot about the technology to selling boxes. We don't know what's in the box. So you think the LG Chem exercise should potentially make us a bit cautious that 10-year warranties could be sitting on an installer's front door and they get a bit nervous, is it? There is an urgent recall on solar home batteries. Affected batteries may overheat and catch fire, resulting in property damage, injury or death. LG, thankfully, to their credit, they went into millions and millions and... 50 million. Okay, 50 Enos million Australia dollars alone. just fixing that problem. They had the bank account to do that. But I would be very scared about going with Nuco Battery Company, cheap out of China, no one knows what it is, or even India now with a big manufacturing coming out of there. People who are not buying high quality brand names are really taking the risk in themselves. And there's gonna be a lot of battery companies who arise out of a rebate who won't be here in two years time. I think the good news is that the government's really intent on inspecting a very high number of installations. They are really taking this very seriously. It was good to hear Chris Bowen, Don Grimes. They are scared of another pink bats. They're scared of it. No, they make sure it's not a pink bats and that's why we only want to have quality batteries and quality installs. I think what we want is good, stable, long-term policy. I think what we want is good, stable, long-term products. But we also need customers to really care care enough to spend an extra thousand dollars if that's the difference because it's not much like they say the poor man pays twice probably the poor man, man pays 10 times in the case of batteries so just don't do cheap what's the pluses and maybe some of the risks on that battery rebate well i mean it's going to accelerate the uptake of the batteries which is fantastic the risks are always the implementation that's always the problem that we face we not quite ready for the implementation, yet we're already at the date. So how does small business actually, you know, wear that, that cost and that time? You mean the cash flow issues? Cash flow issues is the massive one, absolutely. Batteries are expensive, right? I think we'll see some people go, to be fair. Every solar installer that I've spoken to in the last few weeks, is when I ask them how many people are adding batteries to their solar quotes now, 
hundred percent, hundred percent. And of course, we already know from the numbers that so many people who've got solar systems are saying, now's my chance, add a battery. So this is an unstoppable juggernaut. It's the best juggernaut you could ask for because it's exactly what, what our grid network needs as well. So it's a dream come true, can't stop it. We're gonna blow the numbers out of the water and it's just gonna keep going. But like all rebates, there'll be a peak as we take off like we're mm -hmm. seeing now and then things will settle down. So it'll take a little while for things to settle down and you need to choose your partners carefully because some people are going to do it well, some people, unfortunately, probably not so well. So in Australia currently there's 400,000 sun grow inverters operating, is it? Yes, correct. Thight. I think Thight. So I think may have more inverters on, on one plant. So if I've got a commercial, obviously there are more sun grows than yes. one inverter. Yeah, so the number is 400,000 plus. Yes, correct. Now the battery uh, rebate in total, I mean, it's going off like a bang and it's supposed to last for five years, mm. but we might run out of money before that. What do you guys think about that? Are you kind of getting a lot of supply and then suddenly, whoop, the demand will slow down or you just think it's gonna go for a long time? Well, to be honest, based on how crazy the situation it is now, well, I really doubt that they can finish in. They could finish like really, really quick. Right. Yes. My worry is a little bit on the battery rebate. It is so good, but some of the battlers might be tempted to go for the really cheap stuff. Yeah, it's definitely a concern that uh, someone will come into the market that doesn't have that experience with our climate. So they might do well in a foreign land where it's cooler or it's easier to service because the distances are not so big and so on. So that does worry me. I, I really think people, if they're going for batteries, we need to stick with those names that can support it. And when you buy the batteries through someone working with solar juice, so let's say you're doing the sun grow, you've got that double A, you've got those 80 people here in the country, but you've also got that support from solar juice and the technical know-how that they're bringing to the table. Um, the other thing, Marcus, I think we need to look at is that training piece. So if you're an end user looking at going solar, ask your installers what training they've done on batteries beyond the basics, right? Just looking at those safety issues. Uh, because you mentioned before about product, I think we've also got to look at install and making sure we're doing great jobs on terminating cables and all those good things. Um, that's true. And now it's not the solar coaster anymore. More, it's the solar and battery coaster and batteries oh my god when you go down that coaster they take a bit longer to stop yeah they're, they're very heavy <laughs> that's right <laughs> so we are world leaders in solar installation and now we're going to become world leaders in solar plus batteries no that's true and the last thing is for you guys out there you possibly booked out for a month two months and three months and you will still see quotes where somebody's willing to install a big battery system and maybe make a thousand bucks on the job which is not paying for his insurance is not paying for his electricity and all that and those guys that are out there at the moment just to crab the honey and then do a runner please just get out of the industry yeah i'd second that <laughs> So the two founders of Solar Juice, Rami and Andrew, I've known them for over 15 years and basically what they have done in their distribution business is they've focused on quality brands. So why do distributors like Solar Juice want to make sure that they give you good quality gear? It sits with the Australian Consumer Law because the Australian Consumer Law says if the installation company has gone and the manufacturer has disappeared and you can establish who the distributor was, they are still still on the hook to give you support. So if you're a smart distributor, you do not sell the cheap crap because you will have to give up your company. The money that is required for the battery fix-ups could be like in LG Chem's case, 40, 50 million dollars. Now, not everybody's as big as LG. I give you a $50 bet that some of the smaller players that right now print batteries in Australia that we already know won't last the warranty period will be gone. So if you're an end customer and an end consumer and you've been thinking about batteries, please get one that you have after sales still in six years, eight years, 10 years, because the company you've picked is a local hero. Not one of those large sales companies that have regularly closed their doors, even so they claim to be some of the largest of Australia. When you look in their history, oh by God, you will find they have come and gone and come again. So don't go for the cheap stuff. Hey, don't be cheap. So what do you guys think of the federal battery rebate? Let us know in the comments below because I got a battery, I'm a happy chappy. But will it be maybe just Pink Bats 2.0? Let us know what you think. Please support the channel by liking the video, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell and check out all our other videos. Want more Energy Answered? Visit yourenergyanswers.com for quality energy products, tools and calculators, and find your quality local installers.
you're still here. I'll see you next time. Bye.